I'd say it's not that hard. Like, just know your, like, I would maybe advocate just, you know, before you go to UCI, just read up on, there's this book called, I think, Mastering the Coding Interview or something like that. Um, just read through it really quick because they usually ask, you know, those, they're going to ask you algorithms and, you know, data structure questions like linked lists and three, four thousand dollars. I'd say about 90 plus percent, 90 percent of leads received for that job. Most of them get converted. I'd say about, again, about 70, 80 percent of them get converted to full jobs. Uh, there will be people who don't get converted. So that it's not like a, don't take it as like a guarantee that, oh, I'm doing an internship. I'm going to get a full time job. That's going to be sort of dependent on the industry as well. Uh, but yeah, if you're working in a big company and you put in a lot of effort um, and if the rack is open, Software engineer is the most common one, right? That's the that's the one that's going to pick up the most number of people. Uh, data science is this interesting new field that's come up in the last five years and it's catching up. I don't think there's any role like an ML engineer. You're just going to be a software engineer with focusing on ML. You're looking at about at least you should be comfortable securing a 110. Um, if you're, you know, if you're good at the interview with a bonus of 20, 30 at least. So if you're in the top 10 percentile, you get the 120 with 30, 40 as, you know, the sign on. So there were five rounds um, and one lunch round, which is also an interview. So, um, and then this was just on site. Before the on site, I had three telephonic rounds. They'll try and put all their experts together and, and get them to ask you as much as they can um, and try and push you to your limits um, yeah, to, to whatever extent that they can. Uh, and as long as you're confident and uh, you have a cool mind, even if you don't know the answer to something, right? If you're confident, you will say, hey, I have no idea about this, but I can work with you and analyze this problem with you. Um, you'll be fine. Those projects really helped a lot because the interviewers are, besides the, tip, the coding questions and the technical questions that they're going to ask you, which are going to be typical and you're going to have to answer them, um, they will ask you a lot about the projects that you've done and that interests them a lot. And I had a resume, you know, that was built towards this one particular role that I was interested in. So, um, you know, that really helped because that, that you know, puts you, uh, that I guess sets you apart from the rest of the blind applications that they get, you know, just someone who just wants to work in that. So, you know, uh, being in the PhD program, I would uh, travel to conferences a lot and I'd made a lot of um, good connections. The conferences in a field you're interested in can make you meet a lot of people who are in that field and are actually working in that field and probably could tell you, hey, we're looking for a guy in this area. So um, that sort of helped a lot. And then I would specifically apply online for these targeted roles. Like I would go to, like I know Intel had an opening for, you know, compilers in Hillsborough. So I knew exactly go to that, uh, that particular role and apply there. Sometimes through LinkedIn, you know, you can, you can find out, you know, openings at companies and things like that. If you're working for a large, you know, multi-billion dollar corporation, right? Um, they hire lawyers like i have my paralegal and you know my lawyer that i can call and ask questions and they're doing the job for me so it, that that's pretty uh, that, 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 and they do it pretty well like their success rate is very high if you're working for a small startup then they probably don't have the clout and power to have such a strong legal presence and you know uh, have lawyers on retainer for all of their employees and things like that um, so it might be slightly trickier with smaller size companies, um, but uh, I I was abstracted from the nitty gritties of it. I was just often, like my lawyer would come and send me a form and be like, hey, I need this filled out by Friday, like just send it. Work life at Qualcomm is good. It's not super stressful. You can, you can define how, you can define how stressful you want it to be. My expertise is going into the compiler. Um, so a compiler is a piece of technology that um, converts the code that specifically like, since it's Qualcomm, it's a process company, it converts driver code into like um, ones and zeros, machine language. Um, 
and uh, my expertise is going into that and you know changing the final binary to add more security into it.